Let's take a few minutes to look at simplifying square roots because that often is something you have to do when you're working with the Pythagorean theorem. And I want to give you a few suggestions about how to handle them. First of all, it's helpful to remember all the perfect squares, or not all of them, but at least um, the first 13 or so. And I've listed them here for you. They are 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, all the way up to 13 squared is 169, and of course it continues on forever. And if you're ever faced with simplifying square roots, it's nice to have those perfect squares in your mind. For example, if you're asked to square root, say, 64, you could know right away that the answer is 8. Or if you're asked to square root 144, you know right away that the answer is 12. But what happens if you're square rooting something that's not on that list of perfect squares? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. For example, if you're asked to square root, say, 18, or to square root, say, 48, neither of those numbers are on the list of perfect squares. But what you want to think about is, is there a perfect square lurking inside those numbers? And lurking inside 18 is a 9. 18 is 9 times 2. It's also 6 times 3, but neither 6 nor 3 is a perfect square. 9 is, so we're going to use it. And the square root of 9, you know, is 3. So we're going to pull it outside the square root symbol, and it becomes 3. The 2 remains inside. And there's our result. Let's take a look at the square root of 48. There are lots of factors of 48, but the one that comes to my mind that's a perfect square is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. The 16 comes out as a 4, the 3 stays inside the square root, so our answer is 4, the square root of 3. Okay, I want to show you two more examples, and I want to show you these examples because you can take different paths to the same solution, and I want to show you that. All right, so I'm going to delete those, and I want to work first with the square root of 72. I'm going to show the two paths on the left and the right. First of all, most of us probably recognize 72 is 9 times 8, and 9 is a perfect square, so it's great to use. And when we simplify this expression, we get 3, because the square root of 9 is 3, and then we leave 8 inside. But now 8 also has a perfect square sitting inside it, and it's a 4. And we can take the 4 out, and it comes out as a 2. I'm keeping the, the 3 in front, and then the other 2 stays inside. And then the 3 and the 2 out in front, as multipliers, become 6. And our final answer is 6, the square root of 2. Now, others might look at 72 and say, wow, 36 goes into 72 evenly. It's 36 times 2. And the 36 can come out of the square root symbol as a 6, and the 2 will stay inside the square root symbol. So the answer is 6, the square root of 2. And what's terrific is that those two answers match. So if you find a short path, great. But if you don't find the shortest path, you can still get to the right answer. Let's do one more example. So I'm going to delete what I've just written, and we'll do one more example. And that is the square root of 180. And you may want to pause the video now and just do it yourself and see whether you arrive at the same result. And in a moment, I will do two different approaches, and we'll see if we get the same result as well. All right, perhaps you've already done it, but I'm going to go ahead and look at 180 as 9 times 20. And the 9 comes out as a 3, leaving the 20 inside the square root. 20 is 4 times 5. The 4 comes out as a 2. The 5 stays inside. So when I'm done, I get 6, the square root of 5. All right. Another way to look at 180 is 36 times 5. And the 36 comes out as a 6, and the 5 stays inside the square root and I get 6 to the square root of 5. Again, a perfect match. I hope that's helpful.